Damas y caballeros, welcome back to From Across the Pond. I'm your host, Rai Muller, and today we are here to preview Orlando City ahead of the 2022 MLS season. We're lucky enough to be joined by Luis, Luis Carlos Pineda. Thank you for joining us, man, and how are you? Good. I want to thank everybody that is uh, watching or listening uh, across the pond. Thank you so much. Uh, obviously, subscribe to his channel and drop a like. And, uh, well, delighted to be here. Um, sorry about the late, <laughs> being late, but... Uh, I had to attend some work situation that happened. So, but excited to be here and excited to talk about Orlando City for sure. Absolutely, man. And first of all, um, so just looking back on uh, Orlando City the last couple of years, before Oscar Pereja was hired, Orlando City hadn't made the playoffs in their history since joining the league in 2015. Um, since his arrival, the experienced coach has led the Lions to two straight playoff appearances. What do you think his arrival has done for the franchise? I mean, honestly, Oscar Pereja has been the cornerstone, not just of Orlando City. I think it, it, I think it was a, a, co a collective, several things happened. So, for example, the arrival of Luis Musi. And with him um, arriving, um, Oscar Pereja and his staff, uh, they already previously worked at FC Dallas. They were one of the ones that set the foundation for the academy of FC Dallas of what it is now, you know, uh, putting out players like Ricardo Pepe, like uh, Christian Pulisic, like Weston McKinney, you know, um, Oscar and his staff already had a hand on those players before they even became stars, before they even went across the pond to Europe. Um, so I think that was the move that obviously you know, City fans at that time when he arrived were questioning, you know, because the reason is as a, I was a season pass holder at the time. I wasn't covering the team. I, I didn't have the pleasure of covering the team at the time. And it was a, a lot of frustration. You will go to every single game, you know, you will pay your ticket, you know, buy your $20 popcorn, you know, and unfortunately, you know, um, the, the team would underperform and uh, they were undermanaged also. A lot of the coaches before him were terrible. Jason Christ was, uh, didn't have, he, he pretty much uh, brought players that were recycled players in the MLS. Then you have uh, inexperienced coaches. They brought a USL coach too, uh, to coach a couple of, of years. Um, Yoshi Yotun leaves because of him, because he said, I'm not going to have this guy coach me. I mean, I'm in the Peruvian national team. I'm probably going to the World Cup. Why would I have a, a you know, it, it was just not a good time. Oscar came, <clears throat> was very humble, very humble, said, you know, he didn't promise anything or he just said, you know, I'm just here to work. I'm here to you know, build a foundation for this team, build a core for this team, and then, you know, we'll see what happens type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you can automatically see, right before Oscar came, Nani was signed. And again, people question his signing because of what we saw in his final days in Europe. You know, he wasn't really the Nani we saw in Man United. It, it, I mean, clearly, it, he was not. So again, we were seeing, you know, Kaká retiring, <clears throat> Anani coming in uh, with maybe not being a star. DC United at the time brought in Wayne Rooney. You know, um, Slotin Ibrahimovic was in LA Galaxy. And so fans were expecting a signing of that magnitude for, for Ricardo Kaká, right? He just retired. But unfortunately, but fortunately for us, you know, we had a player that him and Oscar bonded completely and his staff, and he re revitalize his career here in Orlando. Uh, I think uh, Oscar of that. He he came and uh, goalkeeping staff was spot on. Uh, his uh, all 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 the staff he had was spot on. When it came to Nani, he started performing well. He scored ten goals the past uh, two seasons. Um, you know and and. Orlando was able to <clears throat> build a, a core. So, for example, the core of the team was a Galese, right? A Galese, Pedro Galese. Uh, you had, um, you know, Antonio Carlos, uh, Robin Jensen. Again, some of these players were already part of the 
you know, failures of before. They were signed before. They had already a, a year with the team. And Oscar was able to grab the same team uh, and pretty much on preseason and on training, just kind of motivate them, show them kind of, in a way, the ropes and the system. And they were able to perform collectively as a unit. And that's how, you know, Chris Mueller came about and he had a wonderful season. He had over 11 goals um, in the 2019 season. Um, 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 you know, 2020, 2019, 2020 season, he had over 11 goals. Then you had Nani on the other flank, on the left flank. Then up front, you had a Teshua Kindele. And obviously, eventually, they drafted Daryl DK, which, you know, he's uh, to me, he's going to be the next uh, number nine for the U.S. men's national team after seeing how they couldn't even beat Canada. I think definitely somebody up top is well needed. So, you know, that's some of the things he did. On the second year, we started seeing um, a little bit of more injuries uh, with some players. Uh, Orlando was able to go into a slump of win a winning streak in the beginning of last season. Um, and because of that, they had a cushion this thick and they were able to, you know, they got some defeats back to back, but they were able to get to the playoffs for the second time. Yeah. But then you have to understand uh, there was something missing. And what was missing was, you know, you had a DK coming from Barnsley and then, you know, readapting to the MLS. Then you had a Pato that never played a game, um, played, I think, 140 minutes tops if, um, you know, there was no good. Yeah. No, I had a, we, you had a lack of you had a lack of scoring. And that's the reason why we didn't make it further yeah. in, the, in, in last year. I hear that. And then given, obviously, there were the uh, letdowns at the end of the season, obviously, with the exit in the playoffs, but given the relative success and the progress that uh, Oscar Pereja had, had, has achieved in his first two years, as well as the fact that Nashville's going over to the Western Conference, why do you think they felt, the front office felt the need to revamp, the, especially the attacking the front players um, with the release of Nani, and, you know, obviously bringing in new players like young stars from South America, like uh, Fagundo Torres. Because, um, you know, we have, we have uh, I mean, we have depth uh, now in, in those positions uh, because, but unfortunately, this the league is getting younger and the league is getting more competitive. And so there is a model, I see it this way. So the old model of the MLS is what you, you probably saw in Inter-Miami. Uh, with Rodolfo Pizarro, with Iguain, with Matuidi, you bring in players with a huge name. You sell a lot of you sell a lot of jerseys. You know uh, that's the old MLS model. Now teams that are getting in the playoffs, if you see, they're getting younger. Uh, Colorado, for example, nobody gave two cents of Colorado getting into the playoffs last year, and they got there far. You have uh, you have the the current MLS champs. Um, they went into a slump bringing Pirlo, bringing David Villa, bringing Lampard, you know, and they brought all these stars, right? And then defeat, 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 didn't make the playoffs. When they started doing properly scouting with their scouting team and going to other countries and maybe looking at, at Tati Castellanos playing in, um, in Chile, going at the time and looking at Alexandre Callens playing in, uh, in the second division of Spanish soccer, you know, uh, then, you know, they're doing more, more work and they're bringing younger players, probably for cheaper, right, at the time, but they can collectively play as a team and work in a system. And that's what you see. And, and, and so that's the success of the reason MLS champs like Atlanta United, how do they Came, became, were a franchise team a year before, and within a year they got the MLS Cup. It's because they're bringing this young talent. So I think Orlando City saw that, and they're like, yeah, I think uh, now we have a new ownership. You know, um, the Wolves are the new owners of the team. They are the owners of the Min uh, Minnesota Vikings from the NFL. And, you know, they saw what's working now in the MLS, and I think Orlando is going that path. Uh, you know, and money right now for them, 
they're gonna they're gonna spend. They opened their wallet this year. I think the most any fan or any journalist as myself has ever seen for the club uh, playing 13 million or, or I think 10 or 15 million dollars uh, for Facundo Torres, which I know for a fact um, he's being looked from a lot of teams. You know, and the reason why he decided to go to the MLS is because some of the South American players see the MLS as a jump start to their careers because they know they're going to succeed here. They're going to going to score a lot of goals. They're probably going to win a lot of cups and, um, you know, and then they can go and go to Europe, you know, and uh, I think we're seeing that now. And I think that's what Orlando City is doing now. You know, we have Facundo Torres on the left, pretty much replacing Nani. Who's his who's his number two? Benji Michel. So you still have a solid player that has played with the team consistently the past two seasons that is a homegrown. So we know that Benji is going to also change the pace of the game if essentially Facundo is subbed out. On the right, you have Sylvester van der Water as a sub, more than likely. And then in May, they're saying that there's a rumor Gaston Gonzalez from Union de Santa Fe may arrive. Um, and he's a right winger, 20-year-old right winger. So it's, again, getting younger. And up front, you know, you have now a lot of weapons. You have Teshua Kindele, if, if, if you, if you want to, you know, conserve the, the, the nil-nil, you know. Uh, you have uh, now Pato playing as a center forward, that he's healthy. Uh, he's been doing preseason. Then you have also Erkan Kara now, 14 goals, 7 assists. He's been scouted. He's been looked upon. He's been, you know, and, and, it's, a, and it's a young player too, 26 years old. You know, still have a lot left in the tank. So that's where the Orlando City is, is doing because the best, the, I will say the best depth and the best um, part of the team that has worked efficiently the last two seasons is the defense. So um, Antonio Carlos, Galese, Ruan, um, Kyle Smith, the, 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 the back line has worked for Orlando very well. Mid, mid, from the mid onwards, it's been kind of so and so. So that's what they put a lot of money in this year to definitely uh, give it a, a plus, you know, and, and see how far they can get this year and in, in hopefully in the playoffs. Yeah. And do you think, obviously, with the additions of Fagundo Torres, and then there was also his name, um, Cesar Arajo, also oh, yeah. a young Uruguayan. Coming in, do you think those youngsters coming in alongside the experience, like you say, of Gaese, of Antonio Carlos, um, these defenders and midfielders like uh, Junior Urso as well, is that a perfect blend in order for Orlando to be fighting amongst the elite of the Eastern Conference once again this season? Sure. I forgot about Araujo, and he's uh, he's one of the players that truly, uh, personally, myself, I would love to see uh, playing in a in an official game now because Orlando the past one of the things about Orlando the past two seasons is the turnover rate. It was horrible, and it's nothing to say about Junior, nothing to say about Andres Perea. They're phenomenal players. Nothing to say about Joey Desart. No, 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 no. This is just a matter of a turnover because of also getting tired. You know, when you're defending over 90 minutes, and let's say for example you have lingering lingering injuries. And then a soccer player wants to keep continue playing because they know behind him there's probably nothing else, right? He wants to continue playing. You have a work ethic, you have work ethic players like Junior Urso. He wants to continue player when playing even if he's injured. Mm -hmm. So now Orlando has has a lot of depth. So now with Cesar Araujo, not not only his age, he's in a Uruguayan national team. He's uh, he's had a lot of good one of the best uh, number sixes right now in the in the Uruguayan league um, and Orlando was able to definitely get him and I, I think in the preseason he will be a starter as a six and I think eventually him and Urso because Urso goes more more in the attack he will be more a, a straight six there and the turnover rate is going to go down at least 50 percent now that he's there and the depth that they have, I think it's going to be great. I think I think that's the reason why. And I think that the mix, like you said, youth and experience is going to be phenomenal. 
Um, Mauricio Pereira stay with the team. Obviously, they're bringing a lot of Uruguayan influx. He's already a veteran. He's been with the team for a couple of seasons. Uh, he's had some seasons that were, you know, are, you know, a couple of seasons that were he was he was in great shape. Then some linking injuries again. For not having a lot of depth, he, he was forced to play a lot of games too. But then you also have Pedro Galese right out back. He's definitely going to be the co-captain. Or he's probably going to be the captain in a couple of games too. And you know he's 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 one of the best keepers to me in South America right now. Uh, and I I am kind of in the disbelief. He's 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 not one of the best keepers in the MLS. Uh, yeah. They didn't sell they didn't select him. And I think that's a that to me is a disgrace. Yeah, well, El Pupo was amazing the other day against Colombia for Peru to get the victory right. from Barranquilla. So, right, um, and, yeah, go. Sorry. No, sorry. And, and, you know, there's a lot of fans, and, and, and I'm going to say this. It's, it's true. Look, I, I posted in September a tweet saying, you know, he should be the best keeper in the MLS. You know, you need to evaluate. If the league wants to, you know, if, if the league wants to emulate what other leagues are doing, you cannot – you have to see the level of competition this keeper is having outside the MLS too. And outside the MLS, he's playing to such a high level. He's so important for the national, for the Peruvian national team. You know, people don't understand the level of competition you do in Comeball. In my opinion, the Comeball qualifiers are the toughest in the world, tougher than Europe, in my opinion. Because in Europe, you can play with freaking San Marino. You can play with freaking, uh, you know, and, and in, in South America, you have to play against Colombia, Uruguay, Ecuador, you know, and, and there's a lot of high players that play at a high level there. And if he's excelling in that level, and then also he's excelling when he comes back to Orlando, don't don't give the man give the man the, the, the award because I think he's the best. He has more competition than Blake. He, he had more competition than, than uh, Matt Turner. And yeah, those players probably played more games in the MLS, but because of their schedule of the national teams, Galese has a different schedule because of the pandemic, because of comable rules. So I think sometimes it's not just numbers and analytics and things that happen in the league. You have to evaluate the, the everything that the players goes through to name them the best. And I think, in my opinion, I'm biasedly speaking, I think he's the best in it. Yeah, uh, understandable. He's definitely, definitely up there. And just getting back to Mauricio Pereira, um, why do you think they chose to bring him back? Obviously, Nani departed. You may be looking at another veteran star of the team uh, leaving, but they chose to bring him back. And he's been injury prone throughout his, his time with Orlando. Um, obviously, he played 29 games last season, which is a good number. But and he looked around a thousand minutes more than he did in 2020. But he only had one more goal involvement. Um, do you think it's it's for the depth, like you said, of the team, or do you think he's kind of there for to be a locker room present as well, especially with the two young stars that were brought in over the off season, were young Uruguayans to help them maybe settle in the club? That's right. Um, Mauricio Pereira had a he played the Russian league and and he 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 was great. Uh, he was signed to Orlando City. Um, he again, you know, he was part of that. Orlando City signing when well, the former coach was there and uh, there really was not any direction. Oscar came and I think he also put him to play right there in the mid, but to me he's a, a straight number 10. So to me he's he's a, he's a creative. You don't want to put him to the, he doesn't defend in my opinion. Um, he, he, he's a creative he, he, he's a creative um, a luxury midfielder. Player. Yeah. Right, right, right. He plays right behind the the center forward, in my opinion, right? That that to me, that's where he excels the most, playing with more freedom up up there. Now he's going to get the chance to do that because he's not going to have to look back and say, "Hey, I have to help Perea." Oh, hey, I have to go and run back and 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 help Nani. You know, now Orlando has has depth and youth that I don't think he'll be needed for him to run back. He's going to be able to do I think his job more efficiently. And yeah, I think the the 70% of, of the reason why also he stayed is because, <clears throat> you know, uh, he, he's been part of the team. He's been a leader, not even, not even, you know, now, but he's been a leader 
before with with a lot of the youngsters that have been added into the team like Daryl that he came in uh, from you know from the draft and then also you know Andres Perea and all those youngsters that came in Chris Mueller now playing in Scotland you know he he's he's been good friends and, and a mentor to them too in in a way because you know he's playing some big teams in, back in Uruguay and because of that reason, I think Orlando wants the assimilation of Facundo, of Cesar, and other players. I mean, if maybe if Gaston comes in in May, in, in June, they want them to assimilate because cultures are similar. And I think, you know, he's already been in Orlando, living in Orlando for a lot of years. His family also knows, you know, the city back and forth. So I think it's just going to make it easier. And as you know, when a player comes from a different country, but you have the tools as a club to help them assimilate faster, you're gonna get a player that is more focused on playing the game than the outside situation. Like, oh, how am I gonna get a driver's license? Or how am I gonna, you know, how, how am I gonna go and do this and do that? You know, he's gonna be more focused on playing the game. And I think that's what Orlando City wants to do. They want these kids to just come in and just play the game. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And then if we're looking towards the striker, obviously, Daryl DK departed in a big money transfer to West Bromwich Albion. Um, and so they've brought in Ersan Kara um, from Austria, who had 14 goals already this season in 32 games. Um, so decent numbers there. And he, I've saw, seen his stature. He's a tall, tall guy. Yeah. Are they kind of trying to replicate that um, physical big striker up there in the Daryl DK mold with Kara? Sure. Um, sure. I mean, Daryl DK was... Um... Again, he, his work ethic is, to me, his work ethic is what, and, and I know WBA fans are a little bit, uh, as I saw it, a little bit disappointed because he got injured you know, right, right after he started. Uh, but he's going to definitely um, redeem himself for sure when he comes back. Uh, he's a phenomenal player, and that's what they want to do. That's exactly what they want to do. They want to keep the system that, has been working with Daryl. They want to keep a system with Daryl that it's been working. And so I think Eric and Cara, 14 goals, um, you know, they're probably scouting him. They probably saw him in the Austrian Superliga and the Bundesliga. And so, you know, that's what they want to do. Plus now, again, there's depth because, I mean, if, if you look at this, you know, Cara can play center forward. And then if Bato, let's say, uh, you know, now, now you have a lot of options depending on what team you're playing against. Because mm -hmm. you can have Kara as a center forward for sure, but then you can have right, right below him, you have even Pato as a second striker, as a, you could do a 4 4 1 1, and you can have Pato right behind him. You can have also, if you want to play with a false nine, you can play with Benji Michel right there, and maybe rest Kara. So there's now more options in, in, in that position that they were before. You know, then you have also Tesho that has also played right be below the, the center forward. He's played a center forward as well. So I think now Orlando with, with Cara, you know, they get a, a striker that is a proven striker, right? A proven striker. And, and we hope, again, uh, that he's going to assimilate faster. And also, you know, he speaks English. So he's already probably going to assimilate faster than getting maybe somebody from, from a different league, right? And is I think it's another benefit to having Pato, who now obviously is in a is on a small contract due to his injury issues, and his his importance for the team is diminished by bringing Kara in, which is I think another beneficial thing for the side. So he could you know be that off the bench player and like you say give a different option depending on the the game plan and the opponent. Um, but who who do you think? could be a breakout player for this uh, for this Orlando side this year? I mean, definitely, um, definitely to me, it's going to be Facundo Torres, right? I mean, I think uh, pe people have, I mean, there's some, there's some part of the fandom has been very supportive and has been part of the fandom saying, you know, oh, Nani's not here and you're bringing, who's, who's, who's Facu, you know? Peñarol is a huge team. Uh, Peñarol is one of the, best academies in South America, aside of Independiente del Valle, aside of right now, I'm talking currently, Red Bull Bragantino. Uh, they, they, they're coming out with a lot of new, exciting players in South America. And 
Europe is taking because of the of also the, the political stance and the political stage of some of these countries. Um, you know, these players are leaving other leagues for, for quite cheap, believe it or not. And so Facundo Torres, he's been scouted. Uh, FC Barcelona was looking at him for a while, even though Barcelona has no money right now. Uh, he was in the Raider for Santos. He was in the Raider for Sao Paulo. But he wanted to play in the MLS. That's, that's, the, that's the reason he decided he wants to play in the MLS because he wants to follow. You know, he's, he's teammate of Diego Rossi. He's teammate of a lot of players in the year one national team have played in, in the MLS already. And, you know, they tell him, you know, this is, you know, you got quality of life. You know, it's a team. It's a it's a league you're gonna excel on, and to me, the most the most the most exciting thing about uh, Facundo Torres is that he's so young. And he's already won everything. He's been in Copa America. He's been uh, in quarterfinals with Uruguay. Mm -hmm. He's been MVP of his league. He's already part of this Uruguayan team that's gonna face Venezuela and probably gonna face Peru right after in March. So. You know, he's at his young age, he's experienced, and I think Orlando is going to tap in into that, and I think he's going to be exciting on the left wing. I mean, I will say he's going to be Tejan Buchanan level, and I think that's the player to me that I, I feel he's going to definitely break out. Looking forward to, finally, uh, a prediction for this season. Where do you see Orlando? What would be a successful season for Orlando City this year? I mean, honestly, I mean, I think every single City fan wants to win the MLS Cup, right? And, uh, I, I, <clears throat> I'm I, a hopeless romantic with the club, too. I definitely see Orlando making the playoffs, that's for sure. I see Orlando making the playoffs. Um, um, winning the Cup itself, we'll take it game, one game at a time. I mean, do we have, do we have a better team than last year? Personally, I believe so, because we have a lot of more depth, a lot of more options. We also have the kids from OCB, uh, the, and we have the under-17. They won a championship, uh, youth, ch youth MLS championship. So there's a lot of depth. Now, um, any further than the playoffs, I would, I would not like to comment because then I could burn myself. Mm. But definitely we'll take it one game at a time. But I think Orlando will, will make the playoffs for a third time, a third, yeah. third straight time for sure. And do you see them as a, a top four seed? So obviously getting a home playoff game in the first round at least. You see a top four, especially with Nashville moving to the West? Oh, yeah, sure. And I think another another club we need to keep, a, keep an eye on, and I'm telling the people in Orlando too, is Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte, they have a great coach, in my opinion. He's... The, the, the Ecuadorian league is, is not is something you dismiss. It's a tough, tough league to play on. And uh, he's won everything in there. And Independiente del Valle is like, a, is, a, is an exciting young team too. And so he's bringing a lot of those players that he's new, know in there. They're building a, a quite a, a nice, nice team. They have Jordi Reina, they have Alan Franco. They have, you know, so they have some players that, you know, honestly, are, are exciting. I, I think Orlando can definitely um, get there, for sure. Um, but, you know, I think playoffs are one game at a time. And, but I believe uh, I believe in the team. I believe on the moves the front office is making, believe it or not. I, I think these are exciting times to be an Orlando City fan because they're actually spending this year. I mean, they, they spent a lot of money, and they're delivering what fans wanted. Fans demanded for years to spend. Why? Why do? Why can we spend like Atlanta? Why can we spend like NYCFC, which are our rivals, right? Uh, or like Miami, right? They're bringing you know some players too, Campana, Low, all these players. Why? Why we can't? So now they're giving it to them. They're keeping their core, as you can see. Moutinho, Jensen, Schlegel is back. Perez is back. Mendes still in the team. You know, I forgot about that, right? Mendes is there too, national player with Ecuador. But now they're adding exciting young players too into the team. I think uh, Orlando's definitely going to get there. Well, Luis, I just want to say thank you very much uh, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to get your analysis. Uh, is there anything you want to plug just before we leave? 
Yeah, sure. I, I want to let everybody know across the pond, you know, to check out Loud and Proud Orlando. It's a podcast that we have every Monday at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. If you obviously, because you're, you guys probably in, you know, in the UK or, or in Europe, um, we're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Just look us up as Loud and Proud Orlando. We talk about Orlando City. We talk about also the U.S. men's national team and here and some international soccer here and there for sure. And um, also we're on YouTube as Loud and Proud Orlando, Facebook, Twitter, everything. And obviously my Twitter, you can follow me at at. Uh, Pineda, it's P-I-N-E-D-A underscore O-R-L. So thank you, Rai, for inviting me and to all your fans. Thank you so much. Thank you, man, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.